Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dubroko, for, for the introduction. Um, let me start with the date of the cons conference. Uh, it corresponds with International Standards Day, uh, which is today, the 14th of October. And it was the idea to give our small contribution with this conference. Uh, the idea was to learn from other countries' experiences uh, and it turned out to have the potential to become a platform of specialists for internationally acclaimed standards on the scope of architectural services and fees, or at least defining the basis for the specific national standards according to national specifics and legislation. I borrowed a short video from the World Standards Corporation since it corresponds with some of the topics we in uh, some way initiated through yesterday's conversation. I want to live in a world that cares about our planet. A world that's inclusive and sustainable. Where sustainable solutions are accessible to all. I want to live in a world where there's peace, prosperity, justice. That's innovative and resilient. Everyone deserves access and food. We want a world that's better, fairer, more sustainable for all. With your help, we can achieve this vision for a better world. International standards happen when people around the world choose to work together. They offer solutions we can all get behind. So learn about standards. Participate in standards. Use standards. So we can all make a difference. Join the movement. And share your vision for a better world. So the idea uh, of this group, uh, of joining in this group, is to uh, in some way develop the standards which, which we will uh, hopefully, hopefully manage to define uh, the value uh, we deliver through our projects, as, as uh, uh, Axel uh, uh, was speaking yesterday. So yesterday we heard an inspirative story about value from Switzerland by Axel. Uh, one a concrete example of, of a successful British system by uh, Sarah and uh, Manos. Uh, Carla and Cornell presented situations from Portugal and Slovakia, which were similar to our problems in Croatia. And uh, last, Alex uh, presented their Romanian experience and gave us an idea of the direction we could be heading. Uh, by forming a clear set of standards, we saw the possibility for professional standards to become a system for big data collection and analysis. Uh, in very short, let me say a thing or two on the topic of standards of services in Croatia. Yesterday, Dubrovko informed us of the history uh, of the scope of services here in Croatia. Uh, and as he noted, our standards derive mostly from um, German Hawaii. Uh, today, our standards cover the topics of urban and space planning, uh, building design or project, which includes new buildings and interior design, and the technical consulting and construction supervision. Um, uh, additionally, in Appendix A, uh, a generic cost breakdown structure for buildings is presented. Um, other documents relevant to the topic are contracts, templates, uh, which are rather basic uh, and uh, define scope, fee, and schedule. They are not as elaborate as, as uh, Alex presented Romanian uh, examples yesterday. Uh, then uh, general conditions, which are um, uh, appendix to the contract and uh, which also require detailed revision. It's one uh, 94 pages document, uh, which um, maybe is uh, too detailed, too elaborate, but that is something to, to be revised. Um, and as Dubrovko said yesterday, examples and templates for normative hours calculation. Uh, also, our members are required to comply the code of professional ethics and the number of uh, rule books, which are defined by our stat statute. Um, here we can see uh, one of the three indicative results of the survey conducted last year from which we see that uh, uh, only 39% of the group uh, uh, um, uh, does not use the scope of services for fee calculation. Uh, only 27% uh, of the tested group uses contracts, uh, contract templates and general conditions of the Croatian Chamber of Architects, and only 40% is informed of the content of sco on scope of the services of other engineering professions, which are not part of Chamber of Architects. Uh, 
Um, also, in current standards, many services are missing. The big agenda on climate change and sustainability is not included. Uh, the ways and the necessity of collaboration among different disciplines and project integration are not stressed enough. No value. Uh, we can conclude that our standards are maybe outdated. Sustainability, digital transformation, and BIM are only some of the big game changers. And the question is, how do we fit in that, into that picture? Do you see yourself in the left or right picture? Sometimes definitely, uh, something definitely needs to be changed if uh, we don't lose, uh, lose the pace uh, that industry has set up, set for us. Uh, regarding BIM, let me also mention the BIM guide from 2016, uh, which was made by a colleague and our BIM expert, Vedran Oresic, uh, that only members can access at the moment. Uh, the BIM guide consists of general information about BIM, um, BIM execution plan templates, uh, LOD examples, uh, level of detail, the level of development, uh, classification systems, introduction to classification systems, and data exchange and responsibilities. Um, I personally see BIM as an opportunity for an architect to gain control over the process, uh, since I see the architecture as an art of collaboration. Um, Collaboration requires coordination between stakeholders and as Axel pointed out yesterday, coordination and especially in terms of BIM carries liability, which needs to get paid. Um, the level of trust between professionals and stakeholders is low. So what we can do about that? Um, in the context of BIM implementation, we are slowly moving in the right direction. However, with pro without proper involvement and planning from the government, we do not see the implementation happening overnight in Croatia. Uh, a chapter of Building Smart opened in Croatia last year, it may give a proper boost. But then we architects could easily uh, become endangered species if we don't follow. Um, we see the need for an interdisciplinary approach and teamwork to reconnect the chambers with a strong focus on engineering approach and collaboration in order to increase the values and redefine the scope of services. When we speak of an interdisciplinary approach, we are missing a big engineering chamber that could be follow our lead. Uh, if we are supposed to take liability for everyone's contribution, how do we do that if other services are not regulated in the same way, through content, through content or value or something else? The other day, Gideon Mastland from uh, MVRDV uh, had the presentation here in Zagreb, and it seems so easy when you have the opportunity to collaborate with Arup or Biro Hapold, for example. But how to collaborate with small companies on a small budget scale who do not have dedicated people for your design only? How to prevent loss of time on waiting and continuous redesign due to that? If you look from a different perspective, we all play the same game. Uh, and in this case, it's creating of our built environment. I see standards as the rules of the game. As children, we uh, played games, played sports, and probably many of us practice this uh, as adults. All games are defined by some rules. Rules are always adopted by mutual, mutual consensus. If there is no consensus on the rules, there is no game. So if we decide to play the game, we have to play by the rules. So why rules? According to the rules, everyone has the opportunity to participate equally in the game, thereby achieving equally condi equal conditions in the competition. What happens if you break the rules? You are either fined or kicked out. Each profession carries with it certain rules that must be played. The rules carry with them a lot of responsibility and require fair play. Here, Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano are smiling. Why this picture? It's iconic. Is it not enough? Well, trust is also an important part of team play. And we play as part of the large team of different professionals and stakeholders. We should be the coordinator, right? Did we lose trust, at least here in Croatia? Uh, and how is it in other countries? Raiko was talking yesterday about the consequences of lowering fees. With the lower quality of projects caused by lower fees, architects could become redundant. As a final result, the profession could get completely deregulated. The whole building culture in Croatia could go really wrong way if that happens. Trust represents a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something in our case, an architect. The trust is based on three main values. So values again, uh, the three values we need to build upon are 
transparency. Transparency is vital because it can ha have a dark, uh, a dark side, especially in creative sector, and it takes real skill to get the balance right. Digital transformation of industry leads to much more transparency than ever before. Communication platforms, visualizations, BIM, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality are all help a lot in communicating an idea through the construction process. With good planning and organization, it becomes possible to reduce time waste to a minimum. And second, reliability, the quality of being trustworthy or of performing consistently well. And last, ability, the physical or mental power or skill needed to do something. Can we, the architects, be like the supermans of the building industry? So together, these positive values create trust. And in the end, trust creates then the additional room for maneuver. Uh, is there a way to rebuild uh, trust in our, in our case? Uh, well, maybe we can learn from the project management discipline, especially for mega projects, where lately trust is one of the major concerns. Um, I'll end my presentation with a diagram and some thoughts from Peter Yedelhauser from Switzerland again, which he presented at one conference in 2019. Uh, in the diagram on the right side, we see the curve of the level of trust and the reasons for ensuring maneuvering room. With maneuvering room, you have the opportunity to change your designs or projects if it becomes necessary or desirable without major consequences on the trust issue. The point is that level of trust should stay on the positive side of the issue, issues curve. And out of the list, it I would probably uh, I would point out the first two as maybe the most important points. We did we risk more engagement for a smaller fee, but if you look at uh, <clears throat> that from the perspective of the client. How can client be sure that you know how to produce that extra value that you want him to pay if you never produced it before? That is most stressed in accepting new technologies, for example, BIM, where education and implementation is expensive, but once you gain it, you can definitely offer added value. Uh, and finally, today we will hear the experiences from countries that were the basis for our current scope of services and the way we practice architecture. Matthias Pfeiffer from Germany and Frank Stasi from Austria. Uh, last but not least, our colleague Mima Suhadols from Slovenia will share the newest experience of development of standards on the scope of services, which they completed in 2021. So thank you very much. And Herr Bacic, the floor is yours. See you soon, hopefully. <laughs>